it's Noreen here with another episode of What's for Dinner. Today we're going to do a slow cooker classic. I'm going to do a cassoulet. And if you've not been familiar with that, it is really old French uh, type of dish that was slow cooked all day long. Uh, traditionally, cassoulet was made with lamb or pork. Um, it really can be done with anything. But um, what I've always done with cassoulet is use chicken and sausages. You can use any combination. You can use a whole cut of chicken. You can use Italian sausages that you brown off. Today I'm going to use organic boneless skinless chicken thighs and some smoked sausage. And we're going to use white beans which is always a number one main ingredient in the cassoulet. And let's see what else is in here. <clears throat> I'm going to cook it in my crock pot today. You can choose to cook it in your pressure cooker. You can choose to do this in the oven. Um, but I'm going to, and you can also use white beans that are canned if you want to. These are great northern beans. White beans, we're going to start off with a pound. These have been rinsed and picked. And I'm going to go ahead and just toss them right in my crock pot. Just like that. Um, also going to use a link of smoked sausage. I have about two pounds of boneless, skinless chicken thighs. They, I'm sorry, they're not boneless. They are skinless chicken thighs. And they are on the bone for a reason. Number one, they're cheaper this way. And number two, you um, get more flavor in your dish when you use the bone. We're going to use some chicken stock, some canned tomatoes, diced tomatoes. I'm going to add an onion. I'm going to add some chopped garlic, some sea salt, some coarse ground black pepper, a teaspoon of Mrs. Dash just for fun. And then I went out in my garden and I harvested some of my herbs. We've got some sage, some thyme, and about a half a dozen bay leaves here. And remember, when you use fresh herbs, you're going to need to use more because dry herbs, dry herbs are uh, less potent. I mean, dry herbs are, you know, not as vibrant as the fresh ones. And I'm going to get the garlic out of the refrigerator right now. I didn't get it out at first, so. My refrigerator is like Fibber McGee's closet. And you know what I find when I'm in here now is that I have an open box of turkey stock. And I'm going to go ahead and use that up before I use the chicken stock. So let me trade places with Rick here. And then the one other thing that we need to do, let me grab this measuring cup, is um, I'm going to go ahead and um, get my water for my beans. And we'll just go ahead and um, we're not going to salt that yet. We're going to put our pepper and our Mrs. Dash, our onion, and don't worry about it. This is all going to cook together and it's going to be really lovely. I'm going to start with two cups of uh, the water. I'm going to add in the tomatoes. Let me give these cans a rinse. You don't want to lose any of that good flavor. I'm stingy. I paid for that, didn't I? All right. Here we go. Let's get a, a stir stick here. Give this a good stir up in there. Let's get out some some garlic. I don't know that much. Two cloves, chopped nice and fine. And I, you know, I have fresh garlic. I buy it like this. I use that too. So, you know, I've had a couple of people comment, you know, why use the stuff in the jar? Well, because it's easier and it's always there. Um, sometimes I don't have time to worry about it. And, you know, we just get over it. Hmm? Today I'm really busy. We've got an event we need to go to. I'm adding some of this turkey stock. I want to make sure my beans have enough liquid to cook in. I'm also getting ready for the county fair here. I have to take my entries on Wednesday, so I'm baking bread, I'm labeling jars, you know how it goes. I'm going to put my sausage kind of chunky. I'm going to cut it on the bias. You cut it however you like it. If you want to stick this whole link in there, go ahead. You don't have to cut it. It just makes it easier, and I think also this helps the flavor of the sausage cook into the dish a little bit nicer. 
I'm going to stick our chicken thighs in here. These are still a little frozen. That's kind of nice though. And it's nice that they are um, skinless because uh, really all that skin, it just takes extra time to take off because it's not good for you. If you're going to roast a chicken, I am all for leaving the skin on, but I don't want you leaving the skin on if you're going to stew it or braise it. Okay, I probably filled up my thing a little bit too much, but that's okay. Things happen. I'm going to take a ladle in my measuring cup, and I'm just going to take a little bit of this liquid off. I'm going to set it off to the side, and yes, I know there's raw chicken juice in here. I'll put it in the fridge. Later on, if I find that I need a little more liquid, I'm just going to stir this right in there. And those beans are going to absorb a lot of juice. So, those beans are going to hang out in the bottom. They're going to suck up all that juice. And all these good things are going to cook together. There is one more thing I'm going to put in here later. I'm going to lay these herbs right in here. We'll pick out those stems. Don't worry. This is going to be so delicious. I'm not going to put this salt in until later. And that's because sometimes if you cook your beans with salt in them, they get tough. We don't want to do that. We want them to be tender. So we'll wait and we'll salt them later. Also later, we're going to put a little white balsamic vinegar in there to give it a nice little acid. And we're going to cut up some kale. And we're going to toss that in there. And we're going to mix it all in there. And it's going to be delicious. It's going to add an extra nutrition, uh, nutritive value, pardon me, to the dish. Be nice with your fresh greens, dried beans, all that protein. It's going to be lovely. So let me bring this over here. I've set it on warm, and I'm just going to wipe the rim off right now. Yes, I know I'm being anal. I don't like it when that happens. I'm going to stick the lid on there and let it have it go for a while. I'm probably not even gonna look at that for six hours. I will be back when this is ready. I'm gonna stir it up and give it a nice zhuzh. And um, I'm probably gonna come back in about four hours and have a look at it. I'll let you see what that looks like when I come back. Okay, I didn't come back and show you earlier, but here we are. We're just about ready to have supper. I'm gonna pull these uh, herbs out and I have to tell you, if you make this, you are totally in for a treat because, folks, this is absolutely out of this world. And you see how all those thyme leaves kind of just fell right off into the pot. And, um, you know, if you get them, you get them. That's the best part about family-style cooking. Here's a, here's a great big wad of herb stems, so we'll just pull those out. And I'll come back in a little while and do the rest because I wanted to show you what else I'm going to make to accompany this. I was initially going to throw my chopped kale in this pot, but I decided to go ahead and saute some kale up Italian style like my grandmother used to make when I was a kid. And I absolutely gobbled it up. Now, you can see that the chicken has really begun to fall off the bone in there. And the sausage has flavored that up. These beans have softened up. This is a beautiful meal, and it's going to render some leftovers. This is probably going to serve, I would say, six to eight people. It probably would be two full dinners for me and my family. Um, there are four of us. And maybe a couple of lunches. It depends on how hungry everybody is tonight. But this is dinner, along with a crusty loaf of bread. And we're good to go. So, what I have done here, let me show you. I have heated up a couple of tablespoons. This is extra virgin olive oil. And I am going to turn this down just a little bit. I'm going to add some garlic to the pan. And here is a bunch of kale that I had taken the stems out of, soaked in the sink for five minutes, kind of given it a good shake around so any sand or sediment that was in there fell to the bottom of the sink. And I put it in my salad spinner and I got it nice and dry. So what I am going to do is I'm going to toss in a couple of good spoonfuls of garlic in my pan. I know my pan may be a little hot, but hey, set that for this one. As soon as we're going to put in some red pepper flakes, 
and we're going to toss our kale right in there. And it is going to spit and sputter because there may be still some moisture on here. Now, don't try and kill yourself kind of mixing this up because it's just not worth it. The best advice I can give you right now is to turn your heat back just a little bit. And go ahead and put the lid on this thing. Five minutes, come back. It's going to be nice and wilted. And we're going to give it a nice stir up. And then we're going to fix you a plate because I know you're hungry. Because I know I'm hungry. Because boy, did we have a heck of a Saturday today. So as soon as this is ready, I'm going to come back and fix you a plate. So I'll be right back. Okay, it's been just about five minutes and we have kind of steam sauteed our kale and I will let you know I did have the pan just a little bit too hot when I put that garlic in and I'm always preaching at you not to put your garlic in first but I wasn't putting onions in so the one thing I'm going to add I have added some salt and some pepper and about a quarter of a cup of organic chicken broth uh, chicken stock and right now I'm going to add a couple of dashes of balsamic white vinegar and this is going to take some of the bitterness out of the kale. Now kale is in the cabbage family and it is something that I grew up with. But this is going to add just the nice, the right level of acid that you're going to need to counterbalance this wonderful dish. Now you can add as much or as little red pepper flake as you like. You can leave it completely out. But I like the bite in, that it gives this dish. And this smells absolutely amazing. So I'm going to go and I'm going to fix you a plate because that's what time it is. There you have it. Slow cooker cassoulet with white beans, chicken thighs, smoked sausage, and sautéed kale on the side. I've paired this up with only some crusty French bread. It's a, actually a whole wheat baguette. And that's really all you need. This, if this is not hearty and satisfying, I really don't know what is. I hope you give this a try. I hope you try it and I hope you enjoy it. So until next time, I'll see ya.